This is the MHS Podcast, the online radio voice of Metuchen High School. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Metuchen High School Podcast, the online radio voice of MHS. I'm Eddie Kalegi with Julia Hirschfield. A big day planned today, lots to get to. First, Greg Tafaro, a local columnist, will be joining us to talk about this crazy fall sports season and the feasibility of winter sports with everything going on. Then we'll be spotlighting the yearbook club. We'll be joined by a couple of their senior members. And lastly, I'll be going through everything in fall sports right now from a touch and including the boys soccer team's GMC blue division title. So before all that, here are the announcements from Julia. Thank you, Eddie. First, a reminder that there is no school next Tuesday, November 3rd, Thursday, November 5th, or Friday, November 6th for election day and the teachers convention. Unlike in recent years though, Monday and Wednesday will be full days, not early dismissal. Breaking the Chain is hosting a spooky movie night this Friday, October 30th at 7 p.m. on the football practice field. Tickets are $5 online at btcte.org slash movie or at the event to watch Boo a Medea Halloween. Lastly, we at the MHS podcast would like to congratulate all students that have been accepted into the National Honor Society for the 2020-21 school year. The virtual induction ceremony will be held in November. That's all for announcements. Back to you, Eddie. Thank you, Julia. And let's move into our interview now with Greg Tafara. Continuing here on the Metuchen High School podcast, the online radio voice of MHS, I'm Eddie Kalegi. It's great to be joined today by someone who a lot of people know for his work, his family's work with the Mud Run here at Metuchen High School, but he's also a journalist, a columnist uh, in the local area. It's great to be joined to talk all about fall sports and this crazy abbreviated unconventional season we have right now. Greg Tafaro, thanks so much for coming on today. Eddie, thank you for having me. It's great to be on with you. So before we get into everything with sports, I mean, I just got to ask you, how have you and your family been doing so far through the pandemic, through these very difficult times in 2020? Thank you so much for asking, Eddie. And, you know, we've been great. My wife's an elementary school principal at James Monroe in South Edison. And, uh, you know, she's blessed to be back in school. And uh, they've shifted from all remote to hybrid instruction. So she's elated to see her students again and to be with her colleagues in person. And um, I'm curious, how have you been doing and how are your classmates at Metuchen High? Well, it's been an interesting year to start because we started initially fully remote for the month of September. But then the hybrid process started in October. And as I've talked about on this show with Julia, it's... It's been, it was weird. I went for two days in person. The craziest thing has been the rerouting of the hallways because they're all one way hallways, two of the main hallways. So you have to really loop around to get to classes. And it's just weird how empty the classes are. Of course, the teachers being masked, the students being masked, lunch is different with dividers between the students. Uh, So I switched back for now to remote. Just, uh, I just want to let the system kind of, you know, get organized. Um, But for now, I mean, it's been a tough year, let's be honest. I mean, high school seniors, it's probably really hard on us compared to, you know, other grades because we expected so much from this year, but it's been, it's been different than what we thought we were going to have. So we're just trying to make the best of it. And one of the things that I've been very happy about is that fall sports have come back in some semblance. It's an unconventional shorter season, but we do have it going. I helped out with the Last Dance World Series back in July which was the first real attempt in the Garden State to get sports back in full swing. It was a baseball tournament across the state. So, Greg, I wanted to ask you, how did that tournament ultimately help, you know, shape and prove to the the government and to the NJSIAA that we can have high school sports going on amidst the pandemic? Yeah, Yeah, I like like your word choice there with shape and prove. Um, Mike Murray, the head baseball coach and the athletics director at St. Joseph High School down the road in Metuchen, um, was the organizer of the Last Dance World Series. More than 220 teams from across the entire state participated. And Mike had a really um, well-wrought plan in terms of how you would deal with the COVID-19 issue throughout the tournament. I believe that a total of six teams had to withdraw due to coronavirus-related issues. Um, He had implemented a testing program, which was mandatory as it pertains to not COVID-19 testing, but testing at the gate and the entryway for players, coaches, and umpires. They had to pass a a screening exam, and they also had their temperatures taken. 
the tournament obviously was a complete and a huge success. Governor Phil Murphy attended several rounds of the event, including the championship game, which was played at Arm & Hammer Ballpark, home of the AA affiliate of the New York Yankees, the Trenton Thunder. Um, it, essentially, you know, with the exception of those six teams that had to withdraw as it pertains to COVID issues, it really went off without a hitch. I mean, even the weather cooperated. So that event, as you mentioned, was a precursor. It kind of laid the groundwork uh, for the NJSIA and uh, their return to play plan for voluntary summer workouts, um, which was such a well-crafted plan. The NJSA really should be commended. The voluntary summer workouts were introduced in three phases. Um, what they did was they limited the groups to pods of 10 or fewer. So that way, if an individual came down with COVID, that pod would have to be shut down, analogous to the way that educators would shut down a cohort inside a classroom setting, right? And, um, uh, you know, I think that the summer proved and gave confidence to the student athletes, the coaches and the administrators that, hey, maybe we can pull this off. And so as we segued into the fall sports season, uh, we had some confidence. Uh, and you cannot put a price tag on the social, emotional well-being and the mental health component um, of sports participation or any extracurricular activity, whether that be marching band, cheerleading, what have you. Um, these kids, your generation, Eddie, I feel, I can't say empathy because I haven't experienced, but such sympathy, I genuinely don't know how your generation is navigating this. And each generation has its cross to bear, right? Whether it's World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Korea. I come from the spoiled brat generation. I'm a product of the 70s. And really, what do we have? An oil crisis or two. Um, so I never experienced anything that you folks are. And, um, you know, I have such honor and respect for the way you guys are all holding together. Yeah, it's certainly been tough. And Sarah Tarasina on our show last year brought that up like that it is our cross to bear in a sense. And you think about like our grandparents that they had to serve in World War II or in Vietnam. And you know what? A lot of them didn't want to be there in the first place. This is a similar situation. I know it's not a war, but still we're, we have to do certain things for the sake of ourselves and for others. And the fact that we are still able to have some semblance of normality like in fall sports is great. So let's talk about it. The fall sports season, couple weeks into it, of course there have been some problems, especially with football teams. There's been a lot of cancellations across the Garden State, not so much with the other sports, namely with football. Let's start on the gridiron. Uh, Metuchen had their own problem a couple of times. We had to shut down the team, cancel the home opener. But across the state, how has football been going outside of Metuchen? Tell you what, and, uh, and this week in particular, it became a huge challenge. More than 60 high school football pro programs in New Jersey have had to suspend for some period of time due to COVID related issues. And more than 130 programs were indirectly impacted. So that means their game had been canceled, it had been postponed, or has to be rescheduled. This week alone in the Big Central Football Conference of which Metuchen is a member, and I'm, I'm trying to do this off the top of my head, we've had uh, Middlesex High School, Monroe High School, Westfield High School, Bridgewater Raritan High School, and I'm forgetting somebody. So there's five schools this week alone that have had to shut down. We just found out a few minutes ago, St. Thomas Aquinas' game tonight against Shore Regional had to be canceled because Shore Regional came up with a presumptive positive. So the interesting thing, and I wrote an article about this uh, in mid-September, and predicting that once school districts and MOS shifted from all remote to some form of in-person hybrid instruction, that we would see a, 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 an increased incidence of programs having to be suspended for obvious reasons. Essentially, Eddie, it only takes two cases to shut a whole school down, right? So mm -hmm. if you those two and isolate those two cases, you can end up shutting an entire school down along with it, it's extracurricular activities. Um, so it, statistically, it just made sense. Um, in week one for the high school football season, we had 24 cancellations. Week 2, 22. Week 3, 23. This week, I believe we're close to three dozen if we haven't surpassed that yet. So the trajectory that we're on is also commensurate with when you look at the state COVID numbers uh, across New Jersey. We're seeing uh, increased incidence of cases and hospitalizations. That's not good news. So as we prepare for a second wave, 
I think it also jeopardizes, and I don't want to say this because I hope we get a winter season, right? But I think it jeopardizes the potential future of the winter season. Yeah, so we'll talk about winter in a moment, but I want to talk about with the fall sports season, of course, I'm a student broadcaster. There's others across the state, and of course, you and others who are professional journalists and columnists. I, I was wondering if you could elaborate a little on the role that we play, especially this year since so many schools are limiting the amount of fans to just parents or for some sports, no attendees at all. Our role that we play to make sure that people get the information they need about fall sports happening this year. Absolutely, absolutely, Eddie. And you and I talked about that before the season started. And I mentioned in you in particular, and again, Eddie, I know you're going to be humble and, and, and take the compliment, but we've been so blessed in Middlesex County to have some outstanding student journalists who are precocious beyond their years and they do a wonderful job with their reporting. You young man are off the charts. Um, the role that you and your peers play is invaluable because we're limited attendance wise, right? On average, um, with, the, with the cap that Governor Murphy has in place, we can only have 500 attendees at a game. In some instances, they include marching band members and or cheerleaders. So that really limits the pool of potential spectators. Now more than ever, mom and dad, Aunt Betty, Uncle Tom down in Florida, they're watching you. So they're watching your broadcast, right? They're listening to your live stream feeds. Um, any information that they can get and you have such an awesome responsibility in that regard. So I, 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 it's wonderful to see the student broadcasters kind of carrying the torch uh, and filling that void for folks that can't actually get into a game. Certainly. So last thing, you brought up winter sports and, you know, the problems posed during the fall sports season can jeopardize the winter season. What do you see right now of the feasibility of a winter season? Because I know it's going to be tough, especially just – just the thought of indoors and whatever Governor Murphy says about indoor gatherings, sports still fit into that. And playing something inside is very different than being outside and having all everything spaced out with air. You know, it's it's hard to think of basketball taking place in a gym in the winter. You would have never thought that would have been the case when we first started this year. But here we are. So what do you think we're looking at right now in terms of winter season? In terms of the winter season, I see this contradiction. If you think about it, Eddie, you and I can play a basketball game and we can play, I can play man-to-man -man defense and get right in your face. But if we're classmates, I have to stay six feet away from you and wear a mask. So mentally, I can't get over that contradiction in settings. Um, but as you astutely noted, we're moving from outdoors to indoors, which is uncharted, uncharted territory for high school sports. I know that at the youth sports level earlier this month, Governor Murphy um, uh, has afforded uh, student athletes the opportunity to play indoor sports whether it be ice hockey volleyball etc so the results we should be paying close attention to the to the youth sports and seeing the impact of COVID on youth sports indoors as we prepare for the winter season uh, again I can't wrap my mind around the sport of wrestling and I'm the wrestling beat writer I love the sport okay and, and, and I hope with my whole heart, mind, body, and soul that we have a wrestling season. But I can't wrap my mind around that sport with the close contact, et cetera, that takes place. Um, also, you know, we have the ventilation, the HVAC component indoors. We, we know that from classroom settings. I don't know how that impacts gymnasiums. Um, you know, so it's, it's going to be just as this fall season was. I hate to be cliche, right? But we're going to be living day to day and we're going to see how these things go. Um, it'll also be interesting to see if we have spectators at those indoor events, because as we stand right now, there's not a mechanism in place for that. Yeah, so nonetheless, it's great that fall sports are back right now in some semblance. Football has had some trouble. The other sports, for the most part, are going pretty well in the state. So hopefully that trend continues, and hopefully we can get some sort of a winter season. Greg, it's always great having you on. Thanks so much for joining us today on the Metuchen High School podcast. Thank you, Eddie. Best wishes to you and your classmates for the rest of the academic year. Thanks a lot. Let's move into our interview now with Julia, Sammy, and Anna from the Yearbook Club. It's been certainly an unconventional year in school, but the Yearbook Club continues on. And to spotlight the club, it's a pleasure to be joined by two of their senior members, Julia Armelli and Sammy Zhu. Thanks for coming on today. So first question, uh, maybe we could start with Julia. When did you guys first become involved with the club and why do you still stick with it to this day? Um, I know I first became involved with yearbook um, towards the end of my junior year when we were starting to plan for our 
our class's senior yearbook. Um, and I know I wanted to join because we actually do get a lot of freedom in like control over the yearbook, which I thought was cool. Like it's not like being a yearbook editor is just a title. Like it's not like Mr. Levy just does all of it for us. Like we have actual control, which I thought was cool and fun to organize. So that's why I'm still doing it today. Sammy, how about you? I also joined end of junior year and I'm just really interested in this type of like designing. And I just thought it'd be really fun to help out. So what has it been like working on the yearbook virtually rather than in person? It hasn't been that bad because all the stuff that are usually in a paper form, like the senior packet, has been moved online. So it's been pretty easy getting everything transitioned over to online. So that's been is easy, but obviously with less school events, also with people having to take their senior portraits elsewhere, and I know there's some people who still haven't already, uh, the, it's difficult getting pictures together because since March, not that many school events have happened. So what have you guys been doing to try to compensate for that? Well, we're definitely going to try to incorporate a lot more student art, like visual art, and maybe even some writing rather than photos. So I think it's kind of like a blessing in disguise because at first we panicked. We're like, what are we going to do without all these sports photos? But now we have a chance to make a lot more unique yearbook with more art in it, which I'm excited to see. Um, but it is going to require the participation of more people. I think we're going to need more people's art and contributions and any small ideas. Like we're coming up with some fun little ideas because like the theme is looking back into our past and like nostalgia like trip down memory lane is what it's going to be called so any kind of mementos from elementary school and middle school I think that people would like to see in the yearbook please let us know if you would like to see them there why should people join the yearbook club So right now we have, we're at like full capacity for editors, but we could definitely use a lot more help. You don't have to join the club necessarily and be an editor to help us out or contribute. There are people who are taking photographs and doing art and writing and just giving us little ideas. Or you could come to meetings and just help brainstorm while we are at full capacity for the editor yeah but we we do need more people's help with coming up with ideas so when do you guys meet and who should people reach out to if they want to join the club so the yearbook club advisor is mr levy and we meet every thursday at 3 p.m on google meets okay well that's great to hear and best of luck going forwards it seems like you have a good idea about looking at the past especially in 2020 when everything is so up in the air it's kind of nice to look back at our days back in campbell and edgar so julia and sammy thanks for joining us and best of luck going forwards with the yearbook club so when we come back the fall sports report until then i'm eddie kalegi this is the metuchen high school podcast the online radio voice of mhs Having trouble seeing the board in class? Do you need safety glasses for your school sport? If you answered yes to either of these questions, head over to Optique Unique, the eyeglass store at 406 Main Street in Metuchen. Optique Unique does it all. Not only do they offer eyewear for all ages, they also sell sports-specific safety glasses for kids and adults. Call them at 732-321-2020. That's 732-321-2020. Or visit OptiqueUnique.com. Do you want to build character, build confidence, or even build yourself? All that and more can be accomplished at the Black Belt Institute at 23 New Street, right here in Metuchen. Students of all ages have been able to learn respect, discipline, fitness, and self-defense from their experienced instructors for over 20 years. Whether you're an adult looking for stress reduction or know someone young who has interest in Taekwondo, the Black Belt Institute is the place to go. The Institute takes a fun approach at teaching the rules of self-defense, instilling in their students an I-can-do-it attitude. Interested in taking a class? Call them at 732-205-9797 or visit their website at blackbeltinst.com. Once again, that's 732-205-9797 or blackbeltinst.com. 
the Black Belt Institute, Metuchen's leader in martial arts and fitness. Welcome back to the Metuchen High School podcast, the online radio voice of MHS. I'm Eddie Kalegi. Josh Hyman not here to record right now. He's busy with the boys' soccer team who just won the GMC Blue Division title and are playing some great soccer right now. We'll get to them in a moment. But with November fast approaching, there's a lot to talk about in the world of fall sports. Typically, we'd be about, you know, six, seven weeks into the season. We're still only about three weeks in, but nonetheless, we're coming down to the bitter end. And a lot of fall sports teams here in Metuchen are performing really, really well. So let's get into it and start with the field hockey team that is still 4-0. Same record as the last time we talked when we were here with Josh two weeks ago because they did have a little bit of a COVID issue. They had an opponent who had a COVID issue. Then we've had a little ourselves here in Metuchen. Uh, you know, these situations are inevitable this year. We already saw it with the football team. They've gotten over it. But the field hockey team is poised and ready to return to action. But they are 4-0 right now. Three of their four games have been home games, but Noel Leaf, the defending conference player of the year, has eight goals and has been overwhelmingly impressive so far this season. She has a hat trick. She had a game-winning goal in their last game against South Brunswick. Defensively is what you got to talk about, though. Olivia Bortman in goal, well, she hasn't had to do that much at all because, frankly, there's not many shots happening on goal, and that is thanks to Metuchen's great defense. Caitlin O'Leary and Lily Bennett, two juniors. Lily Almeida, a senior. Also, Kaylee Mendez, who has a lot of speed on this team as a junior. Even though she plays more on the offensive end, she's able to pl chase players down and take the ball away. So, really great job so far from Metuchen on all ends. You knew the offense was going to be good, but the defense has been in sync as well, and that's what's allowed them to be just as dominant as really any other year. So hopefully the field hockey team gets back on the field and keeps this going. And maybe this year can finally be the year that Coach McLaughlin's team can make a long run in the state playoffs, at least in the sectionals, after, you know, the last three years have all seen some sort of letdown come after they won their GMC title and lose to a team they were, other than last year, the other two years, they struggled against teams that they were expected to beat. Point Pleasant Borough last year, I don't think anybody saw them beating. But other than that, there have been teams that they were expected to win, win against in the state playoffs that they have not. So hopefully this year is the year. Because when you think about it, with Noel Leaf as senior, uh, so many other seniors, Kenny, Lackland, this team might take a slight step back. They're not going to completely fade away to oblivion because we know how talented the field hockey program is. We've seen how field hockey has grown in Metuchen as a youth rec sport, and there's more and more players coming into the high school who have played for so long. But without Leaf there, it's going to take a big hit. So this year is a year they have to capitalize. Second thing is boys' soccer. Man, what a run they've been on. Another win uh, yesterday in Perth Amboy. They're they're, I think, 7-1 and one now. They won their first six games, finally lost on October 23rd against Middlesex 3-1. to one. Middlesex is 9-0, and oh, but they clinched the Blue Division title back on the 21st against St. Thomas Aquinas with a 1-0 victory. Liam Benderley has been really solid in goal through the first seven games. He had 27 saves. Kieran Subramanian, another junior, he has more assists than any other player. But the thing with them is that they are not relying on just one player. Ten different people have scored at least one goal this season on the varsity team, and nobody has more than three. So everybody's getting an opportunity to show their stuff, and they're all working together collaboratively. And at this point, they got to be happy about the results. Third thing is football. So football, for the first time in 51 weeks, they will finally have a home game. It's going to be different. No fans, it's just going to be parents in attendance, but the marching band, the cheerleaders, they'll be there to kind of dilute the ominous mood of not having a student section. But nonetheless, football is back in Metuchen. They've played three road games. Of course, they had the first intended home game. The intended senior day was postponed back on October 10th due to COVID concerns from an indoor gathering that many of the players attended. But Halloween against St. Thomas Aquinas should be fun. They're 0-3 right now. They just lost to South River 29-12, kept it close, but Stephen Mihalishin could not power the offense too much further. He had 143 yards. Jake Lipinski ran for 71. The defense was solid, but 
again, allowed 20 plus points. They've done so in all three games this season. The thing with Metuchen, you can't be thinking that they're just getting blown out by everybody because South River and Spotswood, both those games were separated by less than three scores. So they're keeping it close. North Plainfield, that game is different. But you, when you think about North Plainfield, they blew them out in the playoffs last year. They're new to the Big Central with this new conference. They, they tried to, you know, scale the divisions based on talent, public-private schools and such. But still, metuchen has got St. Thomas and North Plainfield here. So there's going to be problems. But they've taken advantage of games against Spotswood and South River to at least stay competitive. A.J. Perillo has been excellent as a receiver. Aiden Holloway defensively has been really strong for this team, uh, as has Lipinski, as has Christian Shaw, Jacob Bazer. Uh, of course, uh, Neolition at quarterback has been stellar. He's got 333 total yards, 201 of those to Perillo through three games. St. Thomas, you know how they've bolstered their athletic program, not just in basketball, just overall in the last couple of years to really try to compete with St. Joe's as the premier uh, Catholic school in Middlesex County on the athletic end of things. Metuchen three years ago only lost by 18 to this team. Then it was 38-14 last year and this year. Just put this, putting this into perspective, Metuchen lost to Spotswood 20-7. to Spotswood two weeks ago lost 54-14 to to St. Thomas. So the Spotswood defense that only allowed seven against Metuchen allowed 54 against St. Thomas. So just putting things into perspective. But, you know, the Bulldogs are going to be amped up, finally playing at home. But the marching man and the cheerleaders there, it's going to seem like in some ways a semblance of normal normality, like a normal home game. And they're going to be excited to finally play, be playing on their home turf this week and next week to wrap up the regular season. Girls soccer, they started 3-0. Then they kind of faded a little bit to 3-2-1, and one, but they got a big win last Wednesday against South Plainfield. They broke out in a big way offensively with a resounding seven goals to get to 4-2-1 and one now record-wise on the season. Marin Boucher had a hat trick. She has nine goals. Nobody else in the team has more than three at this point. Alex Lipschitz has been really good as well as a sophomore. And this team, you know they're going to be good in one to two years. We said it was building. We thought maybe last year was a little bit of a fluke with them going 10 and 5, but there were still some seniors. This year, there's only one senior that's in the regular rotation, and that's Annalise Delaventura. This, they're in one, two years, especially next year with Boucher as a senior, a lot of other players, Aaron Eustace is a senior, uh, Nika Rockefeller in goal, and Lipschitz will both be juniors. There's, there's a lot to look forward to for Coach Noth's team because then they're kind of – trending towards a lot of upperclassmen like they had a few years ago with Maya Stolarski as one of the stars when that team was so good uh, around 2017-2018. So that's what to look forward to for girls soccer. But for right now, big win over South Plainfield, solid record, hoping to finish things off strong. Lastly, cross country, they the boys, they competed in a seven-on-seven -seven invitational where they split into a varsity and a JV team. Well, you know, technically in Metuchen, don't really have varsity and JV track or cross country. It's usually just you're expected to see when you're walking on Grove Avenue, seeing the one herd of runners just all heading across in their workout. But they did split into the varsity and JV teams. And Coach Holland's splits were good because the varsity team won their race. Senior Romira Nand and Thomas Kwok, junior Josh Byrne, in addition to Jun Gestland and John Udrer, uh, were the heads of that team. And then several seniors were on the JV team, including Ryan Breen, Jai Dreher, Arvin Manavanen, and Matt Brown, to name a few. And they got second in their race. So good job for the boys. Uh, the girls were not in action this past weekend. And finally, girls tennis. Big game tonight. They're kicking off the uh, Central Jersey playoffs in Group East D, the quarterfinal in the sectionals. Uh, they finished the regular season 5-1. and one. Great years for them so far. Seniors, Sophie DeCoy, Alana Stein, juniors, Jamie Hong, Uma Ayer. Really excited to see what happens for this tennis team. They've been building to this moment these last couple of years. Two years ago, they were around 500. They got progressively better. Uh, and now, now they're looking to capitalize in the state playoffs. So best of luck to them tonight. So that's going to wrap up today's show. A thank you to our guests, Greg Tafaro, and then Julia and Sammy 
from the yearbook club. Julia Hirschfield also for the announcements and helping us out today. So next week we have a special show planned next Thursday. We're gonna have two of our former members coming back, Sarah Teresina and Dylan Manfrey, who are both in college. They'll be talking about what the collegiate experience has been like in this unconventional crazy year, Sarah, freshman at Rutgers, Dylan, a junior at Ryder. So looking forward to that next week, Josh and I will be taking you through that. And then Josh Hyman and I will also be on the call Saturday. Happy Halloween. We've got football in the touch and as the Bulldogs face off with St. Thomas Aquinas at one o'clock. It will be live on the new Bulldog Report on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, a collaboration between us with the podcast and Ben Selaski and the members of the Metuchen High School Media Club to put together our probably most prof technologically professional broadcast yet. So you won't want to miss that. Bulldog Report, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube on Saturday at one o'clock as the Bulldogs host the Trojans of St. Thomas Aquinas. Until then, I'm Eddie Kalegi signing off for the Metuchen High School Podcast, the online radio voice of MHS.